Welcome to East by West Farms. Here we grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Today, I'm going to show you the last step of making the butternut squash one. We have a video showing the first step of making the butternut squash wine using the sticky rice one as a starter. You boil the um, butternut squash, smash it, and mix with the sticky rice wine, and then you put it in the instant pot and set the yoga setting and let it ferment. Take maybe two or three days, and after a few days, that's what you get. This is ready to eat. You can smell the alcohol. It's kind of a little bit sour smell, and you can taste it that, um, that it gives you some, a little bit kick of alcohol taste. The next step is you want to mix this with brown sugar and the water and put it in an airtight container and leave it for probably one month or so. I'm going to use this pickling jar with a water lock, so that way it's airtight. The first step, of course, is get this um, fermented butternut squash mash into, uh, into the pickling jar. That's going to be a little bit tedious. I transported all the butternut squash wine into the pickling jar. It's about half full, and then I add an equal part of water in here. One part of butternut squash, fermented butternut squash, and one part of cooled boiled water. The next step is to add sugar. You want to reasonably sweet, uh, actually pretty sweet. It's not very critical because the nice thing of using a water lock pickling jar is you can actually taste it in the process. So after two weeks, I come back and taste it. If I need to add more sugar, I can do that at that time. So I'm just going to pour the sugar in there. You will probably need about one pound of sugar. So this is a two pound bag. Of course. Mm. You, want more, you want more sugar? No, I think that's good, right? Pretty sweet. Yeah. Okay, that's done. The final step is add water to the rim. So now it's water sealed, and then I will come back in two weeks and check it and then to add 
sugar or not, and then after a month, it should be ready. It's been uh, 30 days since we made this butternut squash wine, and it's about time that we can take it out. You can distill it to get the alcohol content higher, but I usually don't do that. So what I do is take this and put it into a glass jar, and then I leave this in the refrigerator so we can consume it whenever we need to. It can actually store quite well in the refrigerator. I think last batch we had stored there for a year and nothing, um, it was still very good after one year. So let's see what we got over here. Mm, I can smell the alcohol. I can probably just pour it if I'm brave enough, maybe not. <laughs> I scoop enough out that I'm comfortable to pour this out without making a big mess. Most of the butternut squash is gone, and there are just a, a few small pieces left. Most of this is liquid. We can just drink it as it is. It's, uh, it's actually kind of very tasty. It has a little bit salt tunch taste, and it it's actually tastes very good. You can decide whether you want to add more sugar or not. Since it's not distilled, the yeast is still working, so you can continue let it ferment and let it age inside the refrigerator. If you let it sit for a while, it will separate so the top is clear amber color and then the bottom of course is left over butternut squash. You can filter those uh, butternut squash, remaining butternut squash out, but I usually don't because those are good fiber for you and I would, I would rather consume it than throw it away. You could also distill it to get the uh, higher alcohol content. I would just skip that step. This are uh, still alive, the yeast is still working, and you can leave it in the refrigerator. You can taste it and still add sugar to it. So I'm going to take a spoon and taste to see how it... Mmm, this is very good. It's actually in the sour side. If you like sweet wine, you can add some sweet to it. But for me, this is good. Well, change of plan. Chris tried it and he think it's a little bit too sour. He like it to be sweeter. What I'm going to do is add some sugar and I, I like to use the brown sugar. This is actually a, a, a sugar cane sugar and it's organic. All I need is just pour some in there. It's not that critical. And then we'll taste it again and have Chris taste it again. Make sure the sugar is dissolved in there.
try it and see that satisfy your sweet tooth. Oh, much better. All right. Okay. The sweetness is pr approved by Chris, so that's done. And all I need is close it up and leave it in the refrigerator so we can have start to enjoy it. In this video, I showed you the last step of making the butternut squash wine. After 30 days, we end up a nice jar of butternut squash wine that we can enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumb up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it down below. If you have not done so, please hit the subscribe button to follow our journey with the East by West Farms.